up guys this is fizzblatt and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to this amazing series phoenix wright ace attorney case one <laughs> this is the first proper case i'm gonna say it's case one this is yes case one so anybody that is new to my channel or is new to this series go back and watch the other episodes we've done what the first episode we did was a tutorial episode um and then we did next episode was the investigation of the first case um so you need to go back and watch those videos so you understand how this game works and so you know what has already happened in the first case and so you've got like you like the characters and stuff like that and also my amazing voices on the characters which is fun um so we are back in it case one and we are going to do our first court case i know i think in this game you have to do more investigation so this doesn't it won't end on this court trial you'll go on doing more investigation so this okay first case will take a couple of episodes but this is gonna be the first proper court case and we'll see phoenix back in action with his defense with his objections and contradictions and all stuff like that it's great and then we meet edgeworth for the first time i've met edgeworth because i played the game before but you guys haven't edgeworth's great he's just he's i think he's probably the best prosecutor in the whole game and you'll see why and i feel like i've got a voice prepared for him but it might end up bad so ignore me for if it goes awful or anything so let's get into it so september 7th 10 a.m district court courtroom number one <sighs> this is oh it's so exciting <laughs> Okay, so court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Faye. Right. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. That was so bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to go with it because I really want him to have a good voice because he's like a really good guy. So, yes. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defence is ready, Your Honour. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Ooh, also, for a recap for people who have seen the other episode. So, Mia's dead. Maya is her sister who is our client who's the one who's up for getting that, that is the court on trial. She's on trial for this court. Right. And then we met our witness April May, and then we've had mystery witness Mr. White. Who is this guy? I guess we'll have to find out, won't we? Um, I met Detective Gumshoe, and um, I think that's it, wasn't it? I think I think that was. Oh, and of course there was the other defence attorney who turned Maya down. I forgot his name. Um, the one I made very American, but a very bad American accent. That guy. <laughs> so let's get into it then. <laughs> right, Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honour. Like, honestly, I was like looking at a recording and I thought I had not recorded, but I had recorded, so we're okay. I had a little mini heart attack, but I'm alright. Everything's fine. This video's fine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honour. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honour. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honour. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Oh, 
Oh, this is when I get interesting now. It's <sighs> great. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I am the detective in charge of a homicide down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Please let me use this floor map of the office to explain. I think I might have changed the voice for Gumshoe when I was going with it. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plan plans the murder scene in the Fay and Court Co Law offices. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Madge Fayer, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Right, we're in it. We are back in it. It's just like the tutorials. We have, like, their, um, their talks, and then we can press them and contradict them, and boom. Yeah. Maya Faye's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. Hmm, the very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honour. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Smack! Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. So yeah, so you can so you can basically press a statement and you can basically like find out more information about that statement. But then sometimes they might like lie or like say something that is not correct and then that way you can say, Oh, objection, that kind of thing. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. Hmm, I should have expected Maya sh would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honour. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Okay. Okay, as soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes more total sense. There were two people that already the defend Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Miss Phoenix Wright, knew that. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. Okay, so we can press her here saying, why? Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it right. Huh? Did did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I, I, guess, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claim, Detective? Um, 
I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes, it does. Yes. Oh. Yes, because we know what he has and it's not going to help our, our sides. <laughs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honour. Sir, there was something I should have told you about first, Your Honour. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I, I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victims wrote the killer's name. Ooh. How are you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin, before we begin cross examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor, why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Um, I, I know, I'm real embarrassed, I uh, forgot about it, your honour, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defence may begin its cross-examination. Hard evidence. Okay. okay I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie detective. Let's talk about reality, shall we? I guess I haven't heard of many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, you, you can, you've got a, you've got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of the killer. Order, order. That didn't go so well. That's right, what he said. That's his whole testimony? Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere, let's find it. Um, what do we have? We have nothing. Could it be upside down? Ah, uh, probably not. Oh! Oh! If she can't write it because it was instantaneous! Done! <laughs> right, hold on, hold on, hold on. She can't because her death was instantaneous! Yes! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Miss Mighty Mia Fay, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fay. That's really what you're saying. What? That isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who could, who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But 
No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who dies immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? Um, it was the day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being? That autopsy report is outdated, your honour. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honour, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. And thank you, sir. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you'd want to say? You're a sham, Edgeworth. <laughs> I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, that defence will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honour. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honour, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. So Mia's autopsy report basically says that she could have lived for a few minutes after being hit. So it was almost instantaneous. Well, Your Honour, the evidence strongly ex suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. And thank you. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Oh, brilliant. Got her voice back. Exactly what part of it is innocent? Your name, please. April May, at your service. I can't wait, so I tried. Order. An introduction should not require any, rea any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Ah, oh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us where you were on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred. Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law offices. Right, big boy? Please testify to the court about what you saw. Got her account now. Whew. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Then the woman with 
the long hair? She kind of sucked. Then the end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Wink. Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I see it is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, don't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss May Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I will. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Oh, she sure does. It was at nine at night, so she is correct on that point. But it's one attack an hour with some else girls, so yeah. She dodged to one side and ran away. So I think you press that. She dodged, dodged what? Well, the attack. Please continue your testimony. Oh. How did you know it was my client? Huh? Well, I... Gee! First of all, she had a girl's physique. And, and secondly, she was... She was small. Who else could it be for her? She has a point. I question it. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? I'm willing to bet that you're lying. Oh, or you saw nothing. Ooh. Oh, I think she's lying. I mean, hmm. Yeah, you're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, tell me, because I'm clueless about this. I me. Okay, if you had really witnessed my client, my FA, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Yes. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the vic witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but, still, we don't know if she was dressed that way then, the night of the murder. She was, Your Honour, because she was arrested at... On... At... Yeah. I saw her, and so did the Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I, I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you, remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did see everything, I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. 
I saw it. I did. That, that clock. How did she know it was a clock? I have her. How did she know it was a clock? Um, the kind of statuey, statuey clock, I the think, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> oh, but we know. I only wish I'd been so detailed from the beginning. We have her. Oh, we have you, Miss April May. Oh, we have you. Oh, we do. Oh, we have you, certainly. Oh, but it's actually... Yeah, I'm going to still present it, because how does she know it's a clock? Yeah, how does she know it's a clock? Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, oh, we could like that, wouldn't you? Naughty, Mr. Lawyer. You just said that the statue of the fist of, thing, of, of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing ju that just by looking at it. <sighs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, could you explain how you know this was a clock? This saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defence is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No, I'm not. But questions are all I have, Your Honour. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers of those questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained, you may continue to question the witness. That was close. If you stop me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That, that's because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of A and Co.? No, I hate, I didn't see that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. The law offices of Fay and Co, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No. Your Honor, I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have wrong because the clockwork came out. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang because it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly just take a clock right now? See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. The, this clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. Fat? Well, Miss May. Tisk tisk. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask when was the clockwork removed if it was after the witness heard the clock then there is no contradiction that's true that is a possibility the clock might have been emptied after she, after she heard it and that is exactly what happened your honor 
Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Uh... Ooh, we do have proof. Wasn't it you who, you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening, and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... This conversation. That's a very cute cell phone. Oh, oh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. The good detective better remember that he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. So, you just want me to hold on to the finger for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not, not working. That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27am. Your Honour, I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go so, to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness had seen it before, if that would make sense. The, 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 yes, I do, because Larry made it. It's not in a department store. Please, yes, it is made by Larry Butts. It's simple, this clock was never in any store ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible, everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuses not on sale today? Oh, oh, ho, ho. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and this witness will remain calm. Oh, 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 oh. silly me. Did I, uh, like, lose it? I guess I did. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh dear, does the defence have an opinion on this behaviour? Okay, that is it. Yes, Your Honour, allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You had heard about it because of the... The thing in her hotel room. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she'd heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honour. There is no other way she could have known the thing was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence. This wiretap. 
have a look at this. Ah! Oh, that? I found this in Miss Bay's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Faye's phone, were you not? Oh! Uh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous! Does the defence to the compl to the claim that the witness was having her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you should still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock. It's right there on the phone, you stupid prosecutor. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used the wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... Your Honour, this is ridiculous. Your Honour, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defence demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer? I, it's not fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? That did it, the court seeing the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. Oh! Why the wire tap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't it tifty tapping out irrelevant? She said exactly what Edgeworth wanted to say. Miss May. You were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Mr. Lawyer, I see that evil, evil grin. You probably think I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's fought that, and of course I can and I will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Okay, so the killing happened around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. Room service. Iced coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, you know? Like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee. Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So where does this leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. 
her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away? There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defence have anything to say? Call the bellboy to witness. The defence would like to ask, would like to call the hotel bellboy to witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to call on this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you'll recognise that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty of for Miss Maya Faye. That is my condition. I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony, otherwise Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. Except we are, we are down. We're going to do this. Understood. I accept your condition. Fool, you fell right into my trap. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea, sir, looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin in his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. Right, I think I'm gonna leave this here because if this has gone on for like about 40 odd minutes, so I'm gonna save it and I think I'm going to do his testimony next. Um, I might, I don't know whether to no so i'm gonna leave this here and i'm gonna basically put this into two episodes um because this is going quite long and i, I don't know if it's gonna just end with a bellboy so the next episode might be a bit shorter but i'm just gonna leave this here because i'm worried that this is just gonna go over um and i'm worried that um it's gonna be too long for an episode so i feel like it's a good starting point to end here um so yes so it's getting really interesting it april is being a devil basically and now we've got the bell boy so this is what edgeworth is like it's absolutely crazy um but yeah stay tuned for the next episode and find out what happens next and I think it'll be exciting. So meet me back here next Sunday for the next part of this court trial. So I hope you guys see me then. Well, you will see me then because I will be here on Sunday. But you guys better be here because this is great. And I'm enjoying this, this series so much. So please guys please give a like please comment down below and please subscribe if you haven't already love you all and i will see you again later bye guys